Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome. My name is Heather, and on this channel, we like to walk a very fine line between a shopping addicted makeup monster and a responsible adult with a makeup hobby. Now, I really enjoy eyeshadow singles, dual chromes, multi-chromes, blush, highlight, lip gloss, basically everything except pressed glitter, and today, we're going to be talking about the 10 weirdest launches of 2022. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, stick with me, we're getting into it right now. So, I have 10 things to talk about. This video is probably not going to be super long, because basically everything I'm just kind of like WTF about but I just wanted to kind of walk through what I thought was the weirdest launches of 2022 and a lot of them were collabs so I think the era of collabing with weird nonsense is here and unfortunately we're probably going to see a lot more of this next year but buckle up so these are in no particular order but I'm just going to talk about everything a little bit at a time the first thing um, was originally discussed on January 17th by Trend Mood. She did a post about a beauty blender that is color changing. And for me, it's just a weird launch because I'm like, it's so lazy. It's so unnecessary. Like who cares? It's color changing when I put my foundation on it because my foundation is not the same color as the sponge. That's it. I don't need all this extra nonsense because hot water or cold water, it doesn't matter. I'm going to put it on my face and move on. So for me, it just seems like a weird gimmick that is unnecessary. The next thing was, that came out was February 20th, and this was again advertised by Trend Mood, and it was the Supreme Chapstick Collab. Now, I don't know about you, but when I think of a chapstick tube, I think of a red and white tube already. So putting the word Supreme on the side of it made very little difference to me in terms of packaging aesthetic, other than it had this word there. Like, I'm super, super confused. I'm supremely confused <laughs> about why we needed this, but it existed. Um, I don't have a price, so I don't know what the um, price ended up being. I'm sure it was not necessarily um, affordable compared to, like, regular chapstick, but that existed as a thing. And again, I'm like, what the heck? The third one that I wanted to mention was this Glitch Out collection from She Glam. Now, I personally do not buy things from She Glam because I've seen the articles and the, um, like all this information surfacing about the working conditions in their factories and things like that. And I'm just not comfortable with purchasing from there. Fortunately, I have like a financial comfort to be able to shop from other places and use my money to kind of cast my vote as to whether or not I think that's okay. I know some people are not in that same financial situation, so they may only be able to afford that or only be able to afford other makeup products that are, you know, like cheaper or whatever. But there are plenty of drugstore brands out there that I think don't treat their people as badly. So definitely think about that um, if you are considering purchasing. But this collection, oh, I don't understand at all. The packaging is like hideous. The color story is not a color story. It's just black and white and then primary colors with a pop of green. Um, I, I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense. There's this weird face palette that's like blush, I guess. I, like I can't even tell what half this stuff is supposed to be used for. And the pictures just make my head hurt. It's just too much, too bright. Your eyes are all over the place. It's overwhelming and I don't like it. Now, for those of you that, that know me in the real world, you know that I am not a fan of people like dressed up as characters. Like if I can't see your face, I, I'm not a fan of that. Like, I don't want you to be some kind of like mascot coming to try to give me a hug. No, thank you. So for me, this hip dot collab really just kind of reminded me of that and was very much a turnoff. They did this with, I want to say it was like troll dolls and then they did it with Sesame Street and they did it with Spongebob these little like character things that you can like rub the character and then that gives you an eyeshadow. None of the colors are like super revolutionary. I don't have a particular affinity for any of these shows so it didn't have like a nostalgia vibe for me either um, and they just look creepy like they're expensive and creepy so that is an absolute pass for me. The next one to talk about is this green screen lipstick. Now <laughs> Other than for TikTok, which clearly this was a product made for TikTok, I don't know when on earth you would use this product because you are not going to be able to tell anything about that in real life. And heaven forbid you work in some type of place where you are in front of a green screen and your lips are going to get green screened out. It's so weird to me. I don't understand what the purpose of green screening your lips is either because it's a 
typically pretty small surface area. So I don't understand the utility of this product at all. And I just think it was a really weird, weird one. The next one to talk about is the Fenty Beauty 5th Anniversary Collector's Lipstick Tube. This lipstick tube cost $500 for Swarovski Crystals. There was a hundred of them available, which like, good for them. I hope they sell them to somebody. But why? <laughs> it didn't even come with a lipstick. Like, that's the most offensive part, is it didn't even come with a lipstick. If you are going to charge $500 for a tube that holds a lipstick, it should come with a lipstick. That's all I'm saying. Very odd to me. In the other excessively expensive category is this collection from Bessemer Cosmetics and Disney. This was the Villains Collection. Now, I did see a review from Heather Austin for this palette. The palette was like, I want to say it was like $200 or some crazy price. And it has pressed glitters in it. And they don't disclose that, which I think is really shady. I think they should definitely disclose that it has pressed glitters so that people know that and can make an informed choice. The nail polishes are like whatever, dime a dozen. The lipsticks, I'm like, who cares? And then the Ursula's um, like necklace thing that they have is super expensive as well. And I think it's like a highlighter. I, I don't know. It's sh like, I feel like they had a good idea. They were almost there and then they just kind of like ruined it with banality. So for me, it's just all an easy pass. It's all like just a weird launch and excessively expensive for no reason. Okay, then we need to talk about nails. So Velveeta did a collab with Nails Inc. and made a cheese scented nail duo. One was a bright yellow, of course, for Velveeta, and the other one was like the red of the Velveeta logo. Uh, I don't know. I have had scented nail polishes before or like top coats that were scented, like s'mores or, you know, pumpkin spice latte, marshmallow, things like that. I'm like, okay, that makes kind of sense because it would smell nice. Like if you are doing something, you know, putting on blush, whatever, and your nails are up by your face, you will smell it and it will smell nice. <laughs> Smelling like stale cheese and bad decisions. I don't think that was the move. I don't know. I don't know, but I don't think it was the move. And the other one that was kind of odd was the Coors Light nail polish that came out. And this one was a thermal nail polish, so it changed colors between hot and cold. So I at least appreciate that it's not smelling like beer because whew, what regrets that would be. But I just don't think you needed the beer name on that to sell it. Like just advertise that you made a blue thermal polish and be done with it. So it just seemed very weird and unnecessary to me. And then the last thing, and probably the most horrifying thing of 2022, and I'm sure if you've been following the makeup launches of this year, you probably already know what I'm going to mention, because there was only th one thing this entire year that was more horrifying than everything I've already mentioned, and it was the Oscar Mayer baloney face mask. Like, not only do you look like a serial killer who needs locked away and questioned by the FBI, but I can't imagine that this has any actual benefits to your skin. It looks ridiculous. I. It's supposed to be moisturizing, I guess. I don't know. But I don't. I don't like it. I think it looks weird. I think it's unnecessary. They really didn't have to do that. And now it just haunts my nightmares. <laughs> All right. And with that said, that is everything for this video. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you go. And I will catch you in my next video. Bye.